All right, welcome to another interview with one of our Botanical Art Collective of North Texas exhibiting artists. We have uh, the summer show online. And uh, this morning I have with us Jara Lang. She uh, is the, can I say the head of the Botanical Art Collective or the, the leader? I think leader, head, yeah, that works. Okay, the leader, that sounds nice. Uh, and um, she has three pieces in the show. Um, and so I thought we would ask her some questions and get to know her a little bit and her process and kind of where she's coming from artistically. So Jara, thank you for joining us. I'm glad to be here. All right, so I'll start um, first by asking um, what brought you to botanical, what brought you to art in general and then botanical art? Why botan well, I, yeah, I spent um, 21 years, my professional career, 21 years in um, the Air Force. And when I retired in 2013, I um, was too young to just retire. So I knew I would need to start a second career. So I explored corporate America for a little bit and um, just sort of had an epiphany at some point and knew that I needed to reinvent myself and pursue art, which is something I was always interested in. Um, it just wasn't the direction I took when I left high school. Um, so I started taking classes at TCC, just trying to find a niche for myself. I thought it was gonna be graphic design. And uh, in that process of trying to educate myself, uh, I needed to take a drawing class. And I landed in a drawing one class with John Hartley and learned that I loved drawing. So that was four years ago and um, just continued taking classes and learning from John and other students and professionals uh, in the TCC community. And John, can, John really encouraged us to work in a series, to try to find a series that you could stick with and follow through on for the course of a semester. And I was always drawn to still lifes. I always wanted to paint um, objects rather than um, people. I didn't, I wasn't as interested in portraiture. Um, and flowers, col bright colors, flowers, uh, water droplets, reflections, those are all things that um, as I look through my phone, I find myself taking pictures of over and over and over again. Um, so after a lot of experimentation, that's where I'm comfortable is, is drawing flowers and uh, plants, landscapes, things like that. Excellent. Um, I know that you use different media. Could you describe your process maybe choosing you know, one painting in the show or um, kind of guide us through how, how you approach making a painting? So uh, I take a lot of photos and that's something I've done my whole life. I, as soon as I had a camera from the youngest age, I was going through film like a machine. Um, and in the <laughs> era of cell phones, uh, I have to pay a uh, good old Apple a lot of money for storage because I just take a lot of photos. Um, and that's sort of the way I just interact with things that I find beautiful is I want to document them with a photo. And that ends up being a very critical part of my art making process that I need to see and interact with the object. I need to photograph it. I need to get on my computer and play with different compositions. Um, and eventually I'm going to get excited about an image and I know immediately when I see that image, somehow I just know that that has to be an oil painting or that has to be a pastel or that has to be a colored pencil drawing. And those are the, the, the media that I am drawn to because they really help me exaggerate colors and details. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a lot of wonderful color in your paintings and the detail is amazing. Um, yeah, that's all I'll say about that. When people go online uh, and see your work, if they haven't already, I think they'll really experience that. Um, 
generally, what is your relationship to nature and to plants? Um, you've kind of covered that a little bit, but if you wanted to go more in depth, that would be great. Yeah, I, um, I told you I was in the military for 21 years and I was a single mom. Um, and the nature of my military career, I moved every two to three years. I moved 21 times. So, um, wow. <laughs> so you know, dragging my young daughter uh, with me through that process, uh, we had to find our own definition for home and how to make ourselves a part of a community in a really short period of time. And one of the things that became very, very important to both of us was exploring nature trails, whether we were hiking or kayaking or mountain biking, um, just exploring outside was, that's how we developed our sense of home. Um, and so just being outside and having my daughter along with me is, uh, is important to me too. Um, she's pursuing her own art degree at UT Austin now. So, um, we just, uh, we love being out in nature and she's really, so far the only human being I know that can, uh, keep up with me in terms of like, when I say I want to go for a long hike, I mean, like from 7 a.m. until it gets dark. And uh, not many people can wow. keep up <laughs> like that, so. Jara, remind me not to go hiking with you. That's a long <laughs> time. <laughs> it was like two or three hours. I'm like, okay, we're done. <laughs> That's wonderful. Oh, I see your cat in the background. He's making, a, making his play for your lap. <laughs> Cats are welcome here. Um, that's really, that's a really wonderful thing to think about as I look at your work. Um, is there a, I know that I know because I've talked to you about this, but for the viewers, is there a special story or two that you want to share about one or two of the pieces that you have in the show? Yeah, I'll, I'll talk about a couple of, well, I'll talk about the, the colored pencil drawing, which is a, a purple iris um, that my mom, uh, sent me a photograph of that and asked me to draw it. Um, well, commissioned me to draw it. She's willing to pay me for my work because she understands the artist's plight. Um, but uh, she's always loved those purple iris. And when uh, my dad and her moved into their current house, um, well, probably 30 years ago, they planted those purple iris. And for a long time, they bloomed and bloomed and bloomed. But for about eight years, uh, they haven't bloomed at all. And my dad passed away several years ago. And uh, this spring, my mom went outside. And on the day that my dad had passed away, there was one single bloom in that patch of iris. And uh, she brought it in the house and um, the stem had broken off and she brought it in the house. And uh, one of our very close friends said, maybe that's his way of saying hello. So that's why she, it was important to her to have that uh, documented permanently in, a, in an art piece. So I hope I did it justice for her. Um, so, cause it was pretty emotional for us to see that, that one single bloom. Um, yeah. And then that, so that's a little colored pencil drawing. And then I have two um, very large pieces. They're four feet by four feet, um, oil paintings. And uh, one of the things that they have in common is they're very up close and personal, um, larger than life um, sort of subject matter. So uh, the other thing that they have in common, uh, which is a theme that I'm working with right now, is finding things that um, some significant portion of the community may find unwanted for some reason. So for example, the dandelion. Um, people are constantly trying to get rid of the dandelions in their yard. Um, and in my image, you see, you know, a busy bee working uh, to gather up the pollen there. And it is so important for us to think about those pollinators and their sources. And are the dandelions really that much of a pest in your yard? Um, they're actually 
you know, from many perspectives, not, not unwanted at all. So, and then um, mushrooms as well. Uh, a lot of times when it rains quite a bit here in Texas and uh, the mushrooms uh, come out in people's yards, they panic a little bit and get out there and start getting rid of them. But if you get down and close and personal with those mushrooms, they're actually quite beautiful um, and interesting and almost fantasy-like. So I like to present that subject matter, that concept of is something really unwanted. And I want to present it in a way that makes you look at it differently. I think that you accomplished that definitely. Uh, that the one with the bee, the up close bee, is just delightful. And um, you and I have talked about the one with the mushrooms is so otherworldly, and the scale of it is so interesting. It, it's just wonderful. Um, so, well, thank you. It's it's really nice to hear those stories again and to think about. Uh, you know, art is really personal. And I think it's good for people to, to recognize that. And you and the other artists that I've interviewed thus far have all really spoken about, yes, they love to make art and they love to express themselves in that way. And they have, they're conservationists. You know, they want to keep, whether it's a dandelion or um, a rare Texas native um, shrub, they're really interested in sharing the beauty and the importance of that with their viewers. And I think that that's really, really neat. And I, yes. And I, I love the Brit and its mission and it really sort of helps me um, define my purpose a little bit more beyond this is pretty. Um, and that's very important to me. And I appreciate the, the work that you all do and the connection that we have. Oh, we feel the same about the Botanical Art Collective, for sure. Thank you. All right. Um, well, thank you for joining us today and also your adorable cat. <laughs> <laughs> He's looking kind of, kind of into this. I don't know. <laughs> He's also probably thinking it's nap time or something. Anyway. Right. Um, Thank you very much for joining us, Jara. Uh, and as a reminder, um, for those watching, you can view this online exhibition of the Botanical Art Collective Summer Show through August 21st. Um, and pieces are, um, they are for sale. So if you're interested in that, um, the information is all on our website. So thank you very much, Jara. Thank you, Erin.